This tooth was a really fun tooth to treat. Selective root retreatment of tooth number 31, lower right seven. Stick around, I'm Bill Nudera. Welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. The tooth was diagnosed with previous root canal treatment in asymptomatic apical periodontitis. It has a full coverage restoration and it appears that the marginal integrity is sound. It's a distal abutment for a mandibular removable partial denture and that's a huge post in that distal canal. The intraoral evaluation shows no signs of swelling or infection, no palpation tenderness with no deep probing depths. And here are the highlights from the CBCT scan. We can see that there's an area of low density associated with both those mesial and distal roots, but from the axial plane, we also see that there's an untreated mesial canal. This radiographic evaluation suggests that this periapical radiolucency is associated with both the mesial and those distal roots. So we have to figure out what our best move is or what our reasonable options here are moving forward. Option one, we can choose extraction. It's the most definitive dental procedure we have, but that's not a great idea here. This is a terminal abutment for a removable partial denture. We can choose full root canal retreatment, which includes the disassembly of the tooth, removal of the crown, removal of the post. It comes with risk. That's a huge post, and there's no guarantee that we can put this tooth back together, and there's no guarantee that we won't cause damage trying to remove that post. The third option is a selective root retreatment, and I believe that that's the best and most conservative approach in this particular situation, although I'm taking a gamble. That lesion that we see on that CBCT scan shows that it's involving both the mesial and those distal roots. So I'm gambling in the sense that I believe that the primary etiology here is the untreated mesial canal. And I'm also gambling that if I treat that mesial canal, that this entire lesion should heal. It may not, but I do think it's worth the risk. When we're doing selective root retreatments, we need to begin by designing a really nice precision slot access. And we do that by taking measurements from our cone beam scan. We can do this from the axial plane by measuring the level of where the target anatomy is. And then we also take our coronal or sagittal plane, whichever shows it more clearly, and estimate a target vertical depth. We can take those measurements from that cone beam scan and translate them to the occlusal table with a periodontal probe so we have a good starting target position for that precision slot access. My goal for this precision slot access was not only to pinpoint the untreated anatomy, but I also tried to design it to avoid damage to that mesial rest. The access was then slowly advanced to that target vertical depth, and then bam, there's the gutta percha in that mesial canal. I felt like an endodontic sniper popping right in exactly where I wanted to be. After removing a bit of the gutta percha, I knew exactly where I needed to start looking for that second canal. Once I found that canal, I was able to get to length pretty easily and establish a confirmed working length. Anytime you're working through small accesses, or any access as a matter of fact, with some sort of metallic restoration, we risk that file shorting out our apex locator by completing the circuit. When I have these situations, I will then make an attempt to insulate my file. I'll take a little plastic tubing and I'll place it around the shank of that file so that when I'm establishing working length with my apex locator and the file happens to hit that metallic restoration, that plastic will insulate that file from shorting out my apex locator, giving me a more accurate reading. I'll make a short little video on how I insulate my files and I'll place it in the description below. So if you look for it today and it's not there yet, stay tuned, it's coming. Whenever I'm retreating a case and there's unaddressed anatomy, I always try to treat that unaddressed anatomy first. I prepare that canal system to its completion and I place sodium hypochlorite in there and allow it to soak to try to leverage my time prior to removing the obturation material from the other canals. I call this endodontic multitasking. The sodium hypochlorite doing its work while I'm moving on doing something else. Once both canals are fully prepared, I then run through my disinfection protocol. With a small access like this, obturation is also gonna be a little bit tricky. I'm using a single cone obturation technique and I'll inject the sealer into both canals first, but I'll place a cone in one canal and I'll sear off that cone and I'll try to make sure that it's weighted towards one side so I'm not blocking out that other canal and I can still visualize it. Took a cone fit to verify my treatment and I was happy with the way things looked. So then I seared the gutta percha off at the level of the orifice. 
this was such a fun case for me because I was able to treat this entire mesial root complex through a small precision slot access of one and a half by one millimeter. I closed the access with a bonded dual cure modified glass ionomer and placed the patient on recall. Here's the final, and now we wait. I just completed this case recently, and I plan on getting this patient back in about six months in order to understand how the healing process is going. There's a chance that we may have to do more with this case, but at this point in time, I believe that the selective root retreatment process is a nice conservative option and expandable. If we have to go in and do a full disassembly, I'm prepared to do it. But let's try the conservative pathway first. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation of mine today, and I look forward to seeing you on future videos that I post. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm Bill Nudera. Thanks for watching.